Shalom Arastafari. In a Arasia Dinostafari name. I am Ras Iadonis the Foreign. We want to touch on in this in this update and this video and teaching. Maybe it, it will become a lecture. However, it is the Rastafari as we have Ethiopian Hebrews rite of passage. What is our rite of passage? Well, seeing and knowing who we are in spirit and in truth as the once lost beta is of Israel, and also knowing the so called curses for disobedience that our people have experienced for 400 plus years, some say more than 500 years. Also knowing that our true um, culture, our legacy, who we are, our way of life has been stripped from us. It is no wonder that we as so-called black people in the West do not have our own indigenous and cultural rite of passage. Instead, there are things and experience, things and times that we have to go through that, that in other words, becomes by force of circumstance our rite of passage for black men and black women. Unfortunately, these experiences, these, these circumstances and situations that we go through as law sheep are not truly our rite of passage as found sheep or once lost but now found beta is arayel. So in that lost state that we are in, if we look at black people's situation, especially black men and black women, but this is, we must begin with the responsibility of black men. And this is one of the reasons why we wanted to touch on this particular subject matter for, I would say, a long time. Some months and perhaps years. This is a, it's a recurring theme that we do not have any rite of passage. Where is our Rastafari bar mitzvah? Or where is our Rastafari bat mitzvah? But we found out that we do have such. In fact, even the bar and the bat mitzvah is an extension of our own way of life, but as practiced by another people, as practiced by others who have come into this heritage legacy commonwealth and who have appropriated for themselves the benefits, uh, the blessings, the assets that we and our ancestors have lost as Beit Israel. So in reclaiming our way of life, it's important for us to touch on this particular topic and theme of rite of passage, quote, end quote, but more, more correctly, our bar mitzvah, but in our terminology, we call it, in the Ethiopic and the Royal and Hark, we call it the Walda Tizaz. The Walda Tizaz. Let me explain. There is the. Let's get a. Let's get the other marker. There's what's known as the. This is usually how it's called Bar Mitzvah. Now there's something known as the Bat Mitzvah as well. And this is, Bat is for daughter, daughter of the commandment. Bar is for son of the commandment. Now, normally if you go look it up and you read it for yourself, they'll say that the Bar Mitzvah really should be the Bar Mitzvah, but they say Bar Mitzvah is the Jewish coming of age. Actually, for Hebrew boys and girls, it's the coming of age. It's the rite of passage ritual. And according to Jewish or Hebrew law, when a Jewish child, coming out of our heritage, a Hebrew child, reaches 13 years of age, 
and it depends on the family. A girl can have her bat mitzvah, some say at the age of 12. They become responsible in the collective sense and community sense. They become responsible for their particular actions. And they become what is known as a bar or a bat mitzvah. And in the plural sense, it's the benai mitzvah. The English son or the bar, the daughter or the bat. And plural, in the plural sense, the children of the commandment. Now, in orthodox communities, a bat mitzvah is celebrated when a girl reaches the age of 12. In addition to being considered responsible for their actions, from a religious, from a religious perspective, benai mitzvah may be counted towards a prayer or a quorum, a, 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 a quorum or a minyam, in the Hebrew they call it minyam, and may lead prayer and other religious services for the community. The age of Benai Mitzvah was selected because it roughly coincides with physical purity or physical maturity. That, that change from being a so-called, a, a, just a, a child into becoming an adult, almost like from boys to men, from girls to, to women. Now, prior to a child reaching the bar or the bat mitzvah, the child's parents, and here's where we're speaking to the parents, the parents of the children or the child hold the responsibility for the child's adherence to Jewish or to Hebrew law, Torah, tradition. After this age, the child bear their responsibility for the Jewish or the Hebrew law or ritual, tradition and ethics and are privileged. Now they receive the right even we can say the entitlement to participate in all areas of Jewish or of Hebrew, in other words to say community life. When used in English, the term also refers to the ceremony, the ceremony itself. So let's get a let's get a better understanding of this rite of passage and how we as Rastafari and as Ethiopian Hebrews need to restore our own Waluda to his eyes. Now Waluda, let's let's explain. Bamarinya, this is Bar Mitzvah, and then you have what's known as the Bat Mitzvah. You understand? This is for this is for girls and this is for boys. So in Bamarinya you have the Welda to his eyes, right? The well, the te e right? Then you have for the girls, then you have for the girls, you have the wallete te e and then this is spelled wallete, some spell two L's, te e now, plural, in the plural sense, I hope you're taking this down, in the plural sense, it would be the where lude to his eyes. And that's where lude, where lude, and this signifies the same as the benai, benai mitzvah, the benai mitzvah. So it's important for us to understand this, and this is all the rite of passage right here. So this right here is for the male. This right here is for the female. And this one right here, the waluda, the waluda to his eyes, is in the collective sense. Now, for the other Jews, they call it the bar mitzvah, or the bar mitzvah, yes. 
we would say bar mitzvah, but that's a, that's a etymological, grammatical point there. We've touched on that before. We'll touch on that again. But for us, our rite of passage is known as a welde for males, tizaz commandment for the girls as a walete the walete tizaz for the girls, and this is a rite of passage ceremony that brings the the child into community responsibility. In, in other words, it's an initiation, it's a rite of passage into adulthood and into full participation in the adult life, in the responsible life of the community. It's part of what we as the once lost but now found Beta Israel, as the so-called black sheep of the family, have lost. And it's particularly important to us to learn what this is, as well as to restore this to our own community, to our own society. But the first step is learning what it is. And then the next step is seeing how we can apply this rite of passage once again to our community life and to our situation. Now, the bar mitzvah ceremony, what we would call the welder, welder to Izaz ceremony, it involves the young man or the young woman being called initially to read the Torah, to read the Torah, a haftara portion, or both at a Shabbat or a Senbet or other service, such as a Thursday morning, Monday morning, or perhaps even a particular festival, feast or festival, when the Torah is read. And it may also involve giving what we know as a Devar, Devar Torah. Devar Torah would be a reasoning or a brief expansion or a lecture on the particular Torah portion, a discussion of that week's Torah reading or, as we say, Orit Minbab, Orit Nebab, or the Orit Kifl. That is, Minbab, Nebab is reading for us, and the Kifl is the portion, as in Hebrew is said, Parsha. Now, in more orthodox congregations, a Bat Mitzvah, which for us would be the Waleta Tizaz for the females or the daughter of the commandment ceremony will not include the Bat Mitzvah girl leading religious services as women are, according to more orthodox standards, ineligible to lead communal religious services in the more orthodox tradition. Now, there are some progressives in Judaism, there are some progressive Orthodox congregations that do allow women, including at the Bat Mitzvah girls, to read Torah or lead prayers at what they call women-only prayer groups. Precisely what the bar of the Bat Mitzvah for us, the Walde, the Walete Tizaz may do, during the particular service, it varies in Judaism's different uh, denominations and can also depend on specific practices of religious congregations. So, at a very start, what we're going to do is we're going to continue with a few of the contents dealing with the responsibilities, touching on some of the modern practices, such as the preparation and study, such as aliyah, such as the celebratory meal, um, the practice of the tefillin, um, Jewish or Hebrew girls for our daughters, our sisters, mothers, wives, um, the humanists. There are some humanist um, Hebrew and Jewish practices. There's also what's known as the second um, bar mitzvah. And then there are Lastly, but not leastly, the bar and the bat mitzvah gifts. 
And then we will also touch on a brief history, a history of the bar and the bat mitzvah. And then to wrap this up, to see how it applies to us as the once lost but now found, Beta Israel. But it's very important for us to consider this rite of passage. And there are many um, black writers and lecturers and teachers and educators who have touched on the need, or at least the lack thereof, of a bar or bat mitzvah. This is a, a rite of passage that we as black people have lost this sense, especially in the captivity, especially in, in, in slavery and being enslaved. We've been stripped almost completely of every social, cultural, um, institution, because these are institutions in our community. We can look at Africa in some ways and see that in Africa they have certain rites of passage ceremonies. We can look at the Middle East and, and East Africa and see they have it over there as well. We can go further into Arabia and to the Levant or Palestine. Or we can see it throughout the world. We can go to the Far East. You understand? Even among the Europeans, we can go down um, among the Native Americans, whether in South or Central or here in North America, and they all have their respective rites of passage sort of ceremonies. It's very important, this transition from childhood to manhood or to adulthood for the for the boys and the males especially because they say that the daughters and women tend to mature faster than um, the males and because of the experiences and circumstances and, and life that women have to experience women tend to develop some level of maturity vis-a-vis -vis the boys quicker and more firmer, whether it's because sometimes they get pregnant, they have children, and they take on these responsibilities, and males not having these rites of passage. And many of us never knew this, never were prepared for no rite of passage. All we was told is that when we get, when we get um, older, we're going to have to either go to college or have to get out the house or have to get a job, or have to take care of ourselves, and we have to be responsible, and, 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 and nobody's going to take care of us, and all this kind of stuff we've learned. And, and some of that is, yes, it's, it's, it's good. We should grow up, mature, take care of our own responsibilities. But there was never any sort of a rite of passage. There was never any sort of a, a way, the way, the truth, and the life in that sense was never explained to us. And many of us had to go through what we call affectionately the New Jerusalem School of Hard Knocks. That means we had to go out there in the world and receive our own hard knocks out there. And it's through that experience for many of us and studying and, 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 and striving to, to find answers that we have come across our own rite of passage you understand, practiced by another people, but still, once we recognize who we are as the once lost but now found beta is Arael, it becomes very much more easier for us to um, re-assimilate this which is our own anyway. And besides that, when we start to look at the bat, the bar and the bat mitzvah, the Jewish or the Hebrew rite of passage, and we start to look at it biblically in the New Testament sense and study, we see that even the apostles were pointing to this very same idea within the Christian or the Christian New Testament early Christianity sense. It's one and the same. In fact, in the, in the epistle of Galatians, which is very interesting, where it says that the, that the law or the Torah, which they would have been referring to, is our schoolmaster. When it is said that the Torah or the law is our schoolmaster, it is speaking about that from childhood, from, from being a child to becoming a son, 
from being a child to becoming a son. So when we start to put all of this together, let's begin with being born again. We have to be born again. So when we are born again and regenerated, and when we're born anew, we're born again as Christ, the uh, Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ says, be as a child again, to be as a child again. So when we are born again, we become as children, because unless we're born big, and if we're born big, something is wrong. We are born as children, spiritually speaking. So in being born again, we are born as children. Then, furthermore, in the Gospels and in the Epistles, it tells us that we have to go from being a child, growing up and learning through a process of learning and study and application, become sons. So we go from being a child to becoming a son. So as we begin to study um, Scripture, the Metaf, the Metaf Kedus, the Bible, we begin to see that there's a process. There's a process, so what we're seeking to do is to put this process in this proper order. And over time, little by little, guess by guess, we've noticed that there is a logical and a re realistical and a an, an applicable process. There is a process to this. The first step, of course, is being born again. This is the first step of being born again. And when we talk about different um, aspects, whether it's baptism, you understand, and, and, and this is also a Hebraic or so-called Jewish thing. Now, what we need to understand is, is in the sense of our black Lord and Savior, the Messiah, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that there is the difference between so-called Orthodox Judaism. But then in the Ethiopian and the Ethiopic example, our Judeo-Christian polity and, and culture and, and, and civilization, we can see this bringing together of our Judeo, our Judaic roots, and our Christian or Messianic anointing. And thus, the half of the story that wasn't known to us and was suppressed from us is once again returned and restored and renewed to us. So, that being said, we're going to seek to continue with more on this very important subject matter of our Rastafari and Ethiopian Hebrew rite of passage that is called in the Jewish sense the Bar or the Bat Mitzvah and in the Ethiopic sense as the Waldet Izaz and the Waldet Izaz, and in the plural sense, as Banai Mitzvah, in the plural sense in the Ethiopic, it is known as the Walude Tizaz. So stay tuned, my brothers and sisters, for more. Shalom Ras Teferi.